Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and this is a bonus video for episode 8 using the multi loft tool and we're going to be looking at creating this curtain pole from using that tool and lofting out those faces. So this is a very simple project, it's very quick and it'll get you straight in there up and working with that multi loft tool. In the previous video we went through the basics of how to use that multi loft tool. In this video this is just going to be a demonstration of how to use it for a real world object. If you like this video, please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. So let's have some fun with this and I'm going to make a curtain pole stopper and I want some twisted iron effect in there with a large ball on the end. So I'm in the part and first of all, I'm going to make the connection. So I'm going to use a tube in there. And I'm not sure how big curtain pole rails are. So I'm going to go something like 40 millimeters in here. And we'll do the inner, inner radius as 30. And our height as 50. Now I'm just doing this quickly just to get the idea of how you would use this. I'm now going to click on this face here. Got that face selected. I'm going to come into the sketcher and create a sketch. I'm going to map it to flat face on that object. So it's there. I'm going to create three circles around here. So I'm going to import this top edge out circle and the inner edge. I'm going to make the circles tangent inside there. The first circle I'm going to place on this line. Zoom in so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to click on the circle and I'm going to control click this edge. We're going to use the tangency. Makes that tangent there. So tangent means that it's touching. I'm going to do the same to the top. Draw click the top and use the tangent there as well. So that's tangent to those edges there. I'm going to do the same for two circles on this side as well. Let's come in, place a circle here. And one over here. Hit escape. And we're going to click one edge, click the other. Use the tangency. Click one edge, click the other. Use the tangency. You don't have to control click them. I know I said to control click them before. You don't actually have to control click those edges. As long as we select one, then select the other. Then that will take effect. I'm going to take these two points, these circles, and place a horizontal constraint in there. So those are now opposite each other. So when I move these, I can move these anywhere in here. So I can move these anywhere and they'll move. So what I want to do now is position these in the place that I want to place them. I can do that by hand or I can use a measurement in there. I'm just going to do it by hand for the time being. Let's close that. And I'm going to take that sketch, come back into the part, and we're going to extrude that sketch. I'm using the extrusion, and I'm going to extrude it by 0.01. So I only want the face for that. So we've got our extrusion there. I'm going to come into the draft. I'm going to use the clone tool and clone that. And we're going to do it three times. Let's turn this on its side and let's move those clones out. So the placement 
position. We're looking along the z-axis. So we're going to position that about 100. Matter of fact, we're going to position it at 50. Next one, z, 100. And next one, z, 150. Can make some adjustments if that's too far. Next, I'm going to place an angle on these. So this one here, I'm going to angle it by a 20. This one, 40. And this one, 60. And that's going to the Curse Workbench. And we'll create our multi loft against each of these extrudes working our way forwards. Get the multi loft. So we've got that there. I'm going to place the ball on the end and then adjust this multi loft to what I desire. So come into the part. I'm going to add a ball. change the radius right click transform and transform that into position it's so, okay that so that's in there and we can come back into our multi loft and we can come down to our strewed, and that's those strudes there. Don't need that sketch, let's hide that a minute. And we're going to increase the rotation of these. So 40. Eighty. And 120. So that's what we've got at the moment. If I'm not happy with that, I can come in and add more circles on here. So for instance, if I go into the extrude, double click on the sketch and use our section view, we can come in and I can move these about here and add another circle. So I'm going to connect this to here. Hit escape and we're going to make the tangency against the tops and the bottom. Close that and that straight away will take effect. I'm going to come back into the sketch and do a section view. Now I'm going to add enough face in here. So I'm going to create a circle here, one here, and one here as well. I'm going to make these circles all the same diameter. So I'm going to come in, select one of them change the diameter, say 10 mil, and control select them all, or just select them all, hit the equality, so they're all 10 mil now, and make the tangency against those two, tangency, and a tangency against these two, and that's already a tangent there, so that's fine. Let's make a tangency against these. Now we've got this, I'm going to use the trim tool, come in and trim the inside. So we've created this effect here. So we close this. We've now got an additional face in here that's been extruded out. 
what we'll do now is come in and actually model around this to make it connecting up. But I think you've got the idea of how this works. So it's quite fun to play with this one. And you can easily make adjustments in here because it's all parametric and can play with this until you get the desired effect that you want. In our next video, we'll look at the pipe shell tool and how to create pipes that weave through your objects and use your objects as support to create such things as this. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash M-A-N-G zero. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.